You know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying, eh? Like, it ain't good enough. Good enough ain't good enough for me. It ain't good enough. I didn't, I didn't get to where I am got to today in business by doing it's good enough. It's, it's not good enough. That's good enough? Well, then that'll be good enough for you too. Forget good enough. If you want to stand out in business, if you want to freaking make it in business and have people talk about you when you leave their property, they're going to talk about you regardless. Trust me, they're going to talk about you. Everybody's going to talk about you. That's what human beings do. We talk about people. When they come and do a service at our home, when we go to a restaurant and eat out, when we go anywhere and do something, people go, did you see that character? Yeah, they do. Everybody does it. Well, not everybody, don't get me wrong. If you don't, then I apologize. But a lot of human beings do. Okay? So, uh, I'm no master. I'll tell you right now, I'm no master. Because I sure do. If I go to a restaurant and, it, and it's not good, it's not good. It's that simple. It's not good. The service was not good. It will reflect in your tip. If you go to a job site and you leave crap all over the place and you're yelling and screaming and you're rude to the customer, it's going to show in your tip. <laughs> right? If you go there and you take their bags away that they've been having around the side of the house that are full of leaves because they're waiting to go to the, the local yard because they can't burn or they can't get rid of that stuff and you take those things, those eight or 10 garbage bags and throw them up in your truck further and go, no, no, don't worry about that, I'll get that. Exactly, you know what I'm saying, I know you do. And the reason I'm going off like this is because I've had some young fellas recently ask me about Buck and how how did you start your business? How did you be, how was your business so successful? How can you pick and choose work now? How, how, how does that work? I don't get it. Well, you got to remember, it's been 20 years. So, but I know guys that have been in business for 15 years, maybe 20 years, and they're still scraping the bottom of the barrel. They're taking jobs that they're, they're fighting for pricing. They're, it's, it's, it's. I know this is a little bit of a strange video for me, but I've been asked these questions, friends. So just, if you don't like this one, just turn her, turn her off, go look, watch another one. But people are interested in this stuff because they're asking me these questions and it would be rude for me not to answer them. So these, these videos are gonna come up from time to time because I like to be fair to everyone and I like to answer as much as I can. Does that make sense, friends? I hope so. So, you know, when I get asked about that stuff, I'm going to tell it what happened, what I did. What, what did you do, Billy Ray? This is what I did. Okay? I was nice to people. I was fair on pricing. I, uh, I always put a ceiling on my prices. I'd say you will spend, like if it was a difficult job to, to quote, I would put kind of a higher price on it, but I would say you will not exceed this price. You will not exceed $3,000 or you will not exceed $1,500. You know what I mean? And, and, and I would stick to that. And I've never, never gone back to a customer and said, hey, listen, we underbid the job. I hate to say it, but that tree was, I wasn't expecting that up there. We need an extra 500 bucks on that tree. That's not gonna give you a good report at the end of the job. It's not gonna work. You won't be back there and you won't be working for any of their friends neither. You just won't. It's that simple. So think of every customer, think of every interaction you have with people, with clients, not even clients, anybody. The lady at the freaking drive through pouring your coffee. What if you said to her, my goodness, you look pretty today, love. Thanks for the coffee and have a great day. And she sees the name on your truck, says Buck and Billy Ray, or whatever your freaking name is, your business. And she's at a Sunday barbecue with some friends and, and, and their friends say, God, I got this crazy tree over my house. I got to get it done. She's going to go, that, that nice tree service guy was nice to me. Give this guy a call. I'm not joking, you friends. Business is, is listen, I think there's a, a, a misconception of what business is for a lot of people. I do, friends. I do. I think there's a misconception. You, you first of all have to get the job. Right? You got to get there. You got to get there in order to wow them and, and to give them the experience of your business. I give them the Buck and Billy Ray experience. So, and that's what I call it. Actually, I called it years ago. I called that. I'm coming onto your property and you're going to remember me. You're going to freaking remember me. 
That's how I went onto their, onto their property. In that in mind, you are gonna remember me. I'm gonna make this an experience that you won't forget. And truly friends, that's not made up stories. I said that and I still say it. And when we go on site, it is an experience. It's a fun, fun experience. I don't go on there and say, oh dear Lord, we, we, we got it. We, this is gonna be a problem. This is gonna be a problem. That, that tree's gonna be a problem. We gotta do this, we gotta do this, and oh, ooga booga. <gasps> no, I just go in there and go, yeah, no problem. Well, we got this handled. Yeah, it's gonna be this. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. You ready to have some fun? You see what I'm saying? People need to feel secure with you on their property. They need to, they need, they need a reason. What's, why are they gonna give you the job? Why is this person gonna give you the job? Here's the analogy, let's go over it again. I went over it about six months ago, I'm gonna do it again. Here we go. Johnny, Johnny's Tree Service comes in, okay? Johnny's Tree Service comes in and, and uh, the client says, hi, hi Johnny, and, and uh, this is the tree back here. And Johnny goes back there and he goes back and he goes, oh wow, and he's got a cigarette hanging out of his yapper and he, he goes back there and he looks and he goes, holy smokes, oh that's, Oh, oh wow, we got, we got, oh, that's, I gotta do this and go, oh, I'm kind of busy, his phone rings, he answers his phone, excuse me, please. answers his phone, he comes back over, he says, well, I'll tell you what, uh, that's gonna be 3,500 bucks, and, and you know, here's my card, and I, I gotta go and, and let us know, you know, okay, I'll see you later. Well, that was a nice experience, wasn't it? How'd you feel? Well, then, Buckin comes in. Does, I'm just using me, because I'm here. Buck and Billy Ray comes in and he goes, this person says, hi Billy Ray, how you doing? I said, great, I'm doing great. This is a super nice place you live in. How long you been here? Like, is this, is this a family property or is it, wow, this is slick. You guys keep a nice yard here. You know what I mean? Just not over the top. They're gonna smell cheesy. Just be you. Just don't be crazy. Be conscientious of what you're doing. You're in there trying to get a freaking job. If you don't need the job, don't go there. So, you know, and, and, and I'll go through and I'll look at the tree and say, oh, it's no problem. I mean, it's a little hectic up there, but we'll just do a roping technique and pull that down and get it done. It's no problem. It's gonna be the same as the last guy. That's what it's gonna be, same as the last guy. What did I say? I forget already, 3,000 or 1,500, whatever I said. Yeah, so, so we, we, we priced the job the exactly the same, exactly the same. John, Johnny's price is the same as my price, exactly. So now the, now the customer is in a dilemma. Wow, we got, we got the same price here. Well, hmm, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Don't think for one minute that business, listen to this closely, young fellas, anybody, don't think for one minute because you can buck a log better than somebody or you're a better tree climber than the next guy or you're better at this or more efficient at this that you're gonna get the job. Don't think for one minute because that part of business, the physical part of cutting the tree, dragging the limbs to the chipper, stuffing chipper, raking up, blowing up, saying goodbye. The physical part of the job is 20% of business. It is, it's 20% of the actual business. The other 80% is this right here. You bet you, sir. We'll see you on Sunday. We're gonna work Sunday for you because it's the only day I got to work this week and I'm gonna get it done for you. That's 80% of business right there, is this, is getting the job. It's service and, and being able to present yourself in a way that comes across confident, experienced, together, you know, not all, not all crazy and, and too busy for the person. We're human freaking beings, but we wanna be, we wanna be talked to, we wanna be looked at in our eyes, we wanna be, you know. 80% of business is psychological, friends. It's the psychological part. And I'm just using that word because that's what it is. It's getting the job. Now you've got the opportunity. Once you've got that job, you got your first job. You're in there now. Now, now, now's the, now's the show. 
Now's the show. You got the job. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You got this job, this, this tree job, or whatever the job is, the paint job, the drywall job, the wiring job, the plumbing job, the landscaping job, whatever it is, gutters, could be cleaning up somebody, it could be nothing. You've got the job. And if you want to be doing that job again for their friends or maybe, you know, all the people they know, then go beyond the call of duty. Go beyond. Freaking put a smile on your face. Be excited about your job. If you're not excited about your job, you got personal problems in your life, you're going to have to somehow put that aside or don't go to work. Everybody's got personal things. That's life. And people don't want to hear about it neither. They, that's the last thing they want to hear is you fighting with your wife and having a problem with your son. or that, that They're not interested in that. They're interested in how much and are you qualified and can you handle the job? That's it. No more information. Right? How much? And do they like you? Are they going to give you the job? So now you've got a job. The, you got your job. Now, you know what? That job, now, he, this, is, this, is, this can be nothing further from the truth that what I'm going to tell you is right now is, is nothing further than from the truth. This is the truth. It happened to me. It's happened to countless other people who are enthusiastic about business and want to make a difference and want you to not forget me when I come to your property and do something for you, okay? So now you've got an opportunity to work for every single person that person knows. They're having a freaking party on Saturday. They are, they're having a party on Sunday for their kids. So there's like 50, not 50, say 15 people coming. And, and, and one just bought a piece of property and they need some clearing done. Another one has a little tree trimming job to do over the house. The limbs are getting into the gutters, but they, the ladder's too, too tall to get to it. They need a tree guy. Guess what's going to happen? If you don't do a good job and conduct yourself in a proper manner on their property, you will not work for, the, for their friends. You won't do it. They're going to go to the next guy as soon as you leave the property. They can't wait fast enough to pay you and get you out of there. Now, if you do a good job and you've done a little bit of extra and your cleanup's good and you go back a few days later to look up and make sure there's no hangers or anything fell out of the trees on the lawn because you know it always does. That was one of my famous ones. I'd go back three, four days later, maybe a couple days, and they'd see me out on the lawn picking up fluffies from our firs because our fir trees are, well, your fir trees, they get stuff, little fluffies get hung in the tree and they come out in the next few days scattered around the yard. I'd be out there picking them up. What's that guy doing, they'd say. They'd look out in the front lawn. There's Bucking out there with his cut off cut off sleeves and his freaking uh, suspenders on picking up fluffies on the lawn giving them a wave and a toot who are they telling to get their friends to get to do tree work for you're darn tootin fucking billy rays who's doing the job so friends this is this went from from wrapping axes to a question that i get asked quite a bit from young fellas listen I don't go tooting my horn off about stuff like this very often, but I'm telling you, uh, business excites me. Business, it, it excites me. I, I love the interaction with people. I love getting a job and taking it to the end and shaking the customer's hand going, thank you so much. You've done a wonderful job. Thank you. No, I'm very happy. I couldn't be happier. Thank you. Here's your, here's your pay. And off I go home to my family and I give 33% to the government in, in a tax account and I take the rest and I put it into my business and buy some food and pay the bills. That's pretty simple. That's what has to happen. So, uh, young fellas, I, I, I know there was a few last week that, that asked that question, or actually it was longer ago than that, I'll be honest, it was, it was longer than that ago. And I'm just getting to it now. Um, there's a lot on the go, but I, I, I really I really like the fact that young fellas are, are thinking about doing their own thing and thinking about running their own business or starting their own thing because this racket can be tough on guys. 
especially if they're working for big conglomerates and you're a number. You're just a number. Not a lot of people are comfortable just being a number. I wasn't. So, so, but I'm just saying this is for that guy and the people who ask those questions. So I, I hope that made sense. I hope that made sense. Okay. Now, Hugh, these axes, I got to say, I've gone beyond the call of duty, my friend. <laughs> I'm wrapping them up and you're getting them. Over and out, friends. Be kind.